temple here. We're given this stress tensor, and it says determine the principal stresses and directions. Okay, so we basically have to solve an eigenvalue problem. So does anybody remember? how to solve for the eigenvalue. You really have to solve for the eigenvalues first, and then you can solve for the eigenvectors. Does anybody remember how to solve for the eigenvalues? What the equation is? Uh, close. The determinant of S? Close. S minus lambda times the identity matrix, right? Right. So, so you take the determinant of S minus lambda I equal to zero. Okay. So first, let's write down what le S minus lambda I is. So, S is just there. One zero zero. 0, 3, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 3, minus lambda i so that's equal to 1 minus lambda to that, right? And I'm sorry, uh, it should be a should be a minus one there, minus one. Okay. So then we want to take the determinant of this guy. And set that equal to zero. So, does anyone remember the formula for the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix? <coughs> yeah. So, remember, I, I actually gave you a long formula, but there's no reason to memorize that formula. The determinant of any matrix any three by three matrix. Remember, we, we, there's a trick that you can take this term and you multiply it by the determinant of that guy. And the determinant of that guy is easy because it's, it's you know, you multiply this diagonal and then subtract this diagonal. You subtract the multiplication of that diagonal. So, <coughs> and then, you know, if the, then you'd, you'd also, you'd take this term and you multiply by the determinant of this guy, and then you take this term and you multiply it by the determinant of that guy. But in this case, we have zero times something and zero times something, right? So it, in this case, the, only the ones in blue matter. And so in this case, we have um, this is equal to one minus lambda times. 3 minus lambda squared plus 2, that's equal to 0. And we can factor this such that we have 1 minus lambda, lambda minus 4, lambda minus 2, that's equal to 0. This should be three. This should be a three right there. Oh. Sorry, I'm sorry. I just so it's it's three minus lambda one. Yeah, so. Sorry. Plus one. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 
There we go. But this is this is right. So this thing, if you multiplied it out, it would be a cubic equation, obviously. But this was easy to factor. If you multiply it out, then this thing has a name. It's called the characteristic equation. What? Well, you have minus you have minus one times neg negative one, so that's that's one, and then this yeah it should be minus one. Sorry. This is all that matters. <laughs> this is right. I know it is. I just okay. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, this thing has a, if you multiply it out, it has a name called the characteristic equation. It's always going to be a polynomial uh, that's the same order. If it's a square matrix, so like a three by three matrix, then this would be a third order polynomial in lambda. If it's a two by two, it would be a second order. It would be a quadratic equation. So you're always going to have the same number of eigenvalues uh, as you have rows in the matrix. Now, in, in certain cases, the eigenvalues may not be unique. You may have repeated eigenvalues, but, but they'll always be uh, the same amount. So, so anyway, then what are the eigenvalues? Yeah. So I can one, two, and three. I'm going to say four, two, one. Okay, because we usually, when we're, when we're talking about principal stresses, we'll, we'll always try to order them from greatest to, to least. Okay, so we'll, we'll order them like that. So now we know the eigenvalues. So there they are. So since we have an eigenvalue, now we can, since we have the eigenvalues, now we can s solve for the eigenvector. So remember that the eigenvector is the vector v, which satisfies this equation for a given lambda. Okay. So if I plug in a lambda, you can think of this, this is just like a times v right? equals 0. Or this is just like ax equal to b, but b is a, that's a 0 vector. Zero vector. So it's a vector f of 0. Right. So we know how to, from the linear algebra lecture, I worked with an example where you solve a system of equations or a matrix equation using row operations. And that's all that this is, right? It's just the right-hand side is zeros, OK? So we can set that up. We can say um, we have a 1 minus lambda, 0, 0, 0, 3 minus lambda, minus 1. 0 minus 1. So, so for lambda equal to 4, then that becomes where I just sort of use the same notation I did when I was working those row operations in the linear algebra lecture, right? So, so this is my right-hand side. Negative 1 minus lambda. Should be the same as that. This, this, this should be the same as that. And then I just plug in 4. So 1 minus 4 is minus 3. 3 minus 4, minus 1. So th this, this, this 3 by 3 here is just that with, with lambda equal to 4 plugged in. And then I just put, 
I just put like a dashed line in the zeros. This is my right hand side. Okay? You don't really even need to put this there because nothing's going to change. Remember when you're doing row operations, you're essentially adding, you're, you're multiplying a row and adding it to the other. Well, no matter what I do, no matter what I multiply by this entry and add it, it's, it's always going to give me the same answer. I mean, it's, it's always going to give a zero. So nothing, nothing's ever going to change there. So I can sort of even drop that part and just do the row operations here. Okay. Now, uh, you'll notice that immediately you have two rows that are identical. Okay. This is actually characteristic of an eigenvalue problem. You're always, you're always going to see this, and I'll explain why in just a second. But let's go through the row operations like we're going to try to solve this. And remember, I may have not have given it a name, but what we're trying to do is make this look as much like the identity matrix as possible, right? And, uh, you know, so you, you basically carry out the operations to try to make this look like the identity matrix until you can't do anymore, okay? And so, for in this case, what we, you know, what we might do is say, multiply the second row by minus one and add it to the third row. Right? So we, we say minus row two plus row three, then that's going to give us minus three, zero, zero, Now I'm going to, at the same time, in one step here, I'm going to divide the first row by minus 3. That'll give me a 1 there. And I'm going to, well, okay, so I'm going to multiply by 1 over 3. Remember my row operation said I can multiply by a number and it doesn't matter? Okay, so I'm going to multiply by minus 1 third this row. And I'm going to multiply this row by minus 1. Okay. <coughs> and that's going to give me this. OK? Now, it's a little bit different than what we had before, because we got this row of zeros. We didn't have that before. In the linear, an example I worked in the linear algebra lecture. We didn't have, we, we sort of could put this in an identity matrix form, and then we could just read off the answer, right? But we can't do it here. But let's write down, let's write down what these equations mean, right? So I'm going to use, sort of, remember this is a system of equations, and if it helps, Maybe I should carry the zeros here. This is just zero, zero, zero. So this is a system of equations. And you know, if I use x for my, the unknown that I'm solving for, then I'd have x1 is equal to 0. x2 is equal to minus x3. And x3 is equal to, well, what? Does anybody know what this row of zeros implies? Some of, you, some of you have taken it linear algebra, so you might have seen this before. That it implies that there are infinite solutions. Okay? So wh what I'm going to say here is that x3 is free. Okay? It means I can choose it to be anything. And the reason there are inf infinite number of solutions is because as long as I have the direction correct, the direction of the vector, I can di diagonalize that matrix. Okay, it doesn't, th the magnitude doesn't matter as long as the direction is correct. Okay, so I can choose the magnitude to be anything, and that's essentially why this is free. I can choose it to be anything, right? So usually, we choose it to be one of two things: either we choose it to make this a unit vector, or we choose it to give us nice integer numbers. All right. So in this case, uh, you'll see that it works out that there's not really, you know. If, but if there were say fractions, if if one of these was a function of a fraction of another one, 
then we could choose this such that it cancels out the fraction and you have nice integer numbers in your eigenvectors, okay? But so since, since it's, we can choose it to be anything, let's just choose it to be one. And so then if I, so now I have x3 equal to one, I plug it back in, x2 is equal to minus one, <coughs> and x1 equals zero. So that eigenvector we were looking for is equal to zero, minus one, one. Okay? And if we, if we want to make this a unit vector, what do we do? Yeah, so you, you divide by the square root of the sum of the squares of the entries, right? So if I square all the entries, I have 0, 1, 1, and add them up, that's 2. Zero, one, 0 plus 1 plus 1 is 2, and take the square root of that. So if I want to make it a unit vector, I just have a 1 over root 2 out here. And of course, when I chose x3, I could have chosen it to be anything. If I would have just chosen it to be 1 over root 2, then I would have immediately ended up with that same result. Right. So in that case, I, I could have chosen it to give me the unit vector exactly. So is everybody OK with this? You're going to have to solve some problems. Like, do you want to work another one? There's two more eigenvectors we can solve for. Do you want to do another one? You want to do another one? Okay. So, what? Yeah, so, um, okay, yeah. So we had this, right? We had uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, we had that, right? You're okay with how we got to there. Like row operation, essentially. Remember, this represents a system of equations. So let's write out the system of equations. So the system of equations is 1 times x1 plus 0 times x2 plus 0 times x3 is equal to 0. And it's 0 times x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0. And it's 0 times x1 plus 0 x2 plus 0 times 3 is equal to 0. All right. Now you got it? All right, so then on the second equation, I just moved x3 to the right-hand side. Right. So uh, let's see. So if we have um, one minus lambda zero. Right, and so for the second eigenvalue was two, right? So for lambda equals to two, then we have one minus two is minus one. Three minus two is one. So the first row operation we'll do is we'll just uh, add the second equation to the first, I mean to the third. So add row two to row three. Oh. 
right? So there's our row zeros. And of course, if I multiply the first row by minus one, then this would become plus one. Mm -hmm. And that's all we can do. So then, by the same logic I just explained, we have x1 is equal to one. I'm sorry, zero. x1 is equal to zero. x2 is equal to now x3, not minus x3, but x3. And x3 is free. We'll choose it this time to be 1 over the square root of 2. Right? So then my vector is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. 1 over the square root of 2, 0. You'll get, uh, no, okay. You'll get the same direction, and they'll have the same unit vector, okay? So if I choose x3 to be like 144 or something, ridiculous. If I then just divide by, the, you know, take the sum of the squares of the components and divide by the square root of that, then it, it'll simplify out to the same answer. So the unit, the unit, because they're in the same direction, the unit vector will always be the same. Uh, the eigenvalues are just scalar numbers, right? Uh, yeah, the eigenvectors are just directions. They can, it, if it helps you, you can always put them in unit vector form. Just always make them a unit vector. And that way, well, there's another reason I was about to get to. If you do this in MATLAB, if you ask for MATLAB to solve the eigenvalue problem for you, what it returns in terms of the vectors are always the unit vectors. So, the, so if you want to check your answer, you need to divide by the magnitude and have it in a, in a unit vector. Okay. And in fact, that's what we're going to do right now. Um, so we can solve for the third one, but it's the same thing. It's easy, right? We, we have two, two of them. Uh, so let's, um, oops. So let's, uh, Let's try it in, in MATLAB, right? If we put in our original matrix, our original you know, stress tensor, we, it was um, 1, 0, 0, 0, 3, minus 1, 0. OK? And then. I believe the command in MATLAB is eig. So if I, I have s and I take eig of s, it's going to return two things. One of them is going to be the matrix of eigenvectors, and the other thing is going to be the eigenvalues. Right? So I'll just to be consistent with the notation I've used in my notes, q and sp for s prime. So there it is. Now, MATLAB puts them in a different convention than what we typically use. It, it orders them, them uh, <coughs> from smallest to largest. Okay, doesn't really matter. But the key thing to note is that you know the, the eigenvalue matrix will always be diagonal like this, and the columns correspond to the eigenvectors. So. If this eigenvalue is 1, its corresponding eigenvector is this one. Right? This eigenvector 2, its corresponding value is this one. Okay? And 3, its corresponding value is this one. And if you notice, at least these are the two we solved for. And if you know that 1 over the square root of 2 is 0 0.707, 
you, you know we got the right answer. Right? Right. So let's see if it works in terms of diagonalizing the matrix, remember? So our original matrix is S. Right? It has off-diagonal terms. Right? And our equation was Q transpose times S times Q should give us the diagonal matrix. And the diagonal matrix will be the eigenvalue ma the eigenvalues right, on the diagonal. So let's try it. We have Q transpose times S times Q. <coughs> and it works. It'll, it'll always be the case if you're using MATLAB, because MATLAB returns the unit vectors of the unitary matrix, OK? And so it, it's, let's just, I mean, that's another reason it's good practice to just always use the unit vectors. Because if, if, the, if the eigenvectors are unit vectors, the matrix will be unitary, and you can just take its transpose. It's much easier to transpose a matrix than to, than to take its inverse. OK, so you know, just to reiterate in terms of stress, right? if you're given a stress tensor that's fully populated, we know that there's some principal direction that if we rotate our coordinate system. So you can't actually really be given a stress tensor without also given a coordinate system, because you sort of need to know, you know what coordinate system that stress tensor is in. So uh, just you know that you know if you know what the coordinate system of the stress is, there's some transformation of that coordinate system you can make that will diagonalize the matrix. And if you diagonalize the matrix, then you know well, it's it's much simpler, right? There's three three numbers instead of six, I guess. Um, is what you know, it's a little bit simpler. This will mean more when we talk about stresses in the Earth, OK? Because it turns out that the nature of the Earth is th that we sort of always know two of the directions. Well, we, kn we always know one of the directions and the plane of the other two principal directions. We, the, the f one of the principal directions is always <laughs> down into the Earth, OK? And then the, other, the, the plane of the other two is in the plane of the Earth. And so all we need to do is figure out the direction of one of those, and we can fully populate a stress tensor. We'll talk about that next time in a little bit more detail. Yes, sir. Again, uh, the convention we'll use is that uh, they should always be ordered, the, you know, greatest to smallest. And uh, again, when we start to talk about stresses in the Earth, there's a reason for that. Okay. Uh, you know, in terms of the computation being done, you can always reorder them. Right. You, you just just know that the the rows in the in the eigen vector matrix correspond to that eigenvalue. Right? Columns in the eigenvector matrix correspond to that eigenvector. All right, so yeah.